let's see. Okay, they're saying it sounds better. Okay, good. I don't know what is happening today, but um, thank you guys for bearing with me. Uh, we will go ahead and get started in a second. Um, let's see, you can hear loud and clear. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and start then. Um, sorry about that. Who knows? Technology has a mind of its own sometimes, but we got through it. It's all good. Luckily, I have some backup stuff. Um, I did get a new mic recently, and it's been working fine, but who knows why. Um, I'll try and figure it out later. But thank you guys so, so much for bearing with me. Thank you for being here. I'm very, very excited about this uh, live stream today. Uh, we have another one of my Senior Ice Melt Playdates. We're going to be doing uh, the Hot Tea Bombs, which is the big new trend, and I'm also going to talk about chocolate bombs and um, bath bombs and all different kinds of um, edible and cosmetic bombs today um, and we're going to go over everything and today is a really really special um, event too because after my live stream here we also have um, a back-to-back -back live stream so Myra uh, the creator of Zioto Pen um, the heat engraving uh, food safe tool is going to be doing a live stream after mine at 4 p.m. EST so in about two hours and um, I'm super duper excited to see her live stream she's going to be making a gorgeous Valentine's um, in engraved ornaments so definitely go and check that out it's on her page and I'll share it as well um, but make sure you don't miss that we we're really excited about Valentine's Day so we thought we'd get, do a little back-to-back -back live stream for you guys of all things ice malt and Zioto pen um, it's gonna be really fun she is a wealth of knowledge so you can ask her about anything um, to do with the Zioto pen and she has tons of different ideas and techniques and it's just so awesome so make sure after this that you go and check that out um, I'll share it like I said or you can check it out on the Zioto pen page um, but first we're gonna do our hot tea bomb uh, live stream so I'm going to show you all different kinds of things. We're going to talk about sugar versus ice malt. We're going to talk about bath bombs. We're going to talk about everything. Well, so um, I'm very excited. Room, What's up? Joey said that it could be the induction burner, but... It could be, but sometimes, I mean, we have it on occasionally while I'm doing live, so I think it was probably just the mic. Um, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> sometimes it happens. It's better now. That's all that counts. So, um... Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first off, I just want to talk about ice malt and sugar um, and kind of comparisons and things because I know that there was a, a little bit of confusion about um, using ice malt for this kind of thing, using uh, sugar and, uh, you know, what which to use when and all of that. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that first before we get started. Um, so basically today I'm going to be using, of course, my Simi ice malt. So the ice malt is already pre-cooked and tiled um, into these hard candy tiles. Um, so basically with this, all you have to do is melt it down uh, for 30 seconds and then 50 second intervals until it's a liquid so it makes it really easy so basically ice malt is a sugar-free hard candy and it's going to be uh, completely edible it's made from beets so it's a byproduct of beet sugar and it is going to be a hundred percent sugar-free um, and hundred percent edible and safe to eat so um, that is going to be what I'm using today because of course I love ice malt I love using ice malt um, and it is going to work really good for these techniques but I wanted to talk about the comparison of both so basically with ice malt um, and with sugar the beauty of the sugar and food world and really the art world in general is that there is lots of different mediums to choose from depending on the different things that are important to you for your piece and um, what you're using so um, with something like this that is purely going to be edible of course it does look really beautiful and it gives you a lot of customization as far as what kind of uh, unique decorations you can put on um, but it also does give you uh, pretty much an edible shell that's going to dissolve into our hot tea right and release the tea leaves um, and steep the tea so with this um, you could use either ice malt or sugar. That is completely up to you. Um, some, of, some of the comparisons with both, if you were to use a real boiled sugar, it is going to be just pure sugar, which is an advantage um, because it is something you know that you have uh, probably already in your kitchen and it's going to be very, very sweet. Um, but that can also be a downside because some people don't want the sweetness, right? They want just hot tea. They don't want a sweet tea. So um, you will, you can't really get around using real, uh, real sugar with that, uh, with the sweetness. So that is going to be one thing uh, for real sugar. Another thing with real sugar is it is a lot harder to keep clear, uh, whereas ice malt you can keep it a lot clearer. So if you're not planning to color this or you're planning to color it something that yellow doesn't have um, a good undertone to it, it definitely can be a disadvantage because uh, you can't necessarily put blue in it because then it'll turn green. So ice malt is better um, as far as making it uh, a little bit better of a base to mix colors into. So um, are we still having audio issues? A little hum. A little hum. I'm trying to think of this, maybe. Okay, let me know. <laughs> um, so another uh, thing with uh, ice malt vers versus uh, boiled sugar is going to be that real boiled sugar is very, very temperamental and susceptible to humidity and moisture. So if you are making the tea bombs and immediately going to use them and eat them, um, you can absolutely use the sugar. Um, but if you weren't wanted to have any sort of longevity to it where it's not going to melt and get sticky, especially in a humid climate, it's really not going to work 
as well because um, sugar does absorb all of that moisture and it will break down a lot faster. So if you want something that's going to last a little bit longer, um, you can use isomalt. And isomalt is actually something that is going to, like I said, be completely sugar free um, and it's going to be completely edible as well. Like I said, it's made from beets, so it's going to uh, be completely edible and safe to eat. Um, I know that there's been some confusion about isomalt um, in the past with it, but basically uh, with isomalt, in a daily serving, you can have about 50 grams per person. Is not going to have any um, digestive issues or anything like that. So you can have about 50 grams um, of isomalt per day. Uh, each tea bomb that I use is about 15 grams, or each tea bomb that I make, so that is well within the, the daily allotment, even if you had a couple of them. Um, but remember that everyone is different. Everyone has different sensitivities and allergies. You absolutely could um, have a uh, intolerance to it that you may not be able to have quite as much, but basically uh, I have never had any issue with serving about a lollipop size or a tea bomb size uh, or cupcake topper size of ice malt, um, and uh, it's basically like anything else you wouldn't you know, recommend eating an entire sugar topper either, right? Um, or gum paste or anything like that. So it's completely edible and safe to use, um, but it's definitely going to uh, be your choice what you want to make. All of these techniques that I'm going to show you today are going to be applicable to either boiled sugar or to isomalt. It just depends on those little things, um, you know, what's going to work best for you. But like I said, you could use either. If you do want to do a traditional boiled sugar, um, you absolutely could uh, do that. And I really like the recipe from Sugar Geek Show. So if you look up sugargeekshow.com um, and in their search bar, you can look up, I believe it's a lollipop tutorial, but she has the recipe separate. And she has a really, really good uh, boiled sugar recipe. I've used it for this. It works awesome. Um, and it does definitely stay a little bit clearer with her method than uh, some other ones that I've tried. So I do recommend Sugar Geek Show a uh, recipe if you are interested in using real sugar. And if you don't have a recipe already, um, I really like that one. So again, completely up to you. If you have any other um, questions or anything like that, please feel free to write them in the comments, um, in the chat, and we will be happy to answer them. Yes. Sandra would like to know, can you add flavor to the isomalt? Yes, you absolutely can. That is a very good point. Um, we're going to be melting the isomalt, and at that point, once it's melted, you can mix in oil-based flavorings. So oil-based are going to work best because they won't evaporate like extracts will or emulsions, um, which are generally alcohol-based or water. Um, so I like to use oil-based. It doesn't take very much. Don't taste test it while it's hot. Make sure that you pour a small mold, you dribble some out on a silicone mat and let it cool. Then you can taste test it, but it really does not take more than a couple drops to get a really potent flavor. So if if you wanted to coordinate the flavor of your isomalt uh, or your sugar with the uh, kind of tea that you're using, you definitely could do that. Okay, everybody good? All right, awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start with making our pieces now, the most exciting part. Um, I'm going to switch my camera down to my work table so that you guys can see uh, what I am doing here. So I think it's right. the fan in your computer. It's the fan in my computer? That's so strange. It usually is on, so I'm not sure why it is loud today. No, I don't know either. Very strange. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully I will try and talk loud enough that you can hear me over that, and um, I'll try and figure that out after this um, for why it's doing that. But um, for now, basically, like I said, we're melting the uh, ice malt, so it's just a clear hard candy and ice malt's used in a lot of different things as well that's something else i wanted to mention um ice malt is used in a lot of different cough drops um, because it is the hard candy form without uh, spiking your blood sugar in any way so it's used in a lot of different cough drops if you look at the ingredients a lot of times you will see ice malt it's also used in sugar-free hard candies such as uh, Jolly Ranchers, they use isomalt a lot of times for their um, ice for their sugar-free versions of their candies. So isomalt is something that you probably have consumed before um, and have never even realized it multiple times. Um, so it's basically just going to be a hard candy without that spike of the blood sugar, um, and it's kind of just like a blank canvas. It's totally clear and um, totally flavorless. It's just uh, isomalt's a tiny bit sweet, but it really isn't that sweet um, compared to sugar. It just sort of dissolves in your mouth. So that's why I like it for the tea bombs. Plus, it stays a lot shiny and like I said it's not as susceptible to that moisture and humidity so um, we're just melting that down 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals in the microwave until it's a liquid so I went ahead and did that I may have to yeah just pop that back in and uh, we'll go ahead and pour the um, the tea bombs first. So what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using this geometric heart mold. I actually cut mine apart, so there's six pieces. I have a couple pre-poured over here, um, but there's six pieces. 
and you can go ahead and uh, use those for each one of your halves and I like to cut it apart because I find it's way easier um, to be filling and draining them when you are doing it this way compared to if you did it in one big sheet um, you'd have to have a big enough bowl to flip the whole thing over to drain it or you'd have to do them one by one and then you don't want to um, you know hurt the previous one or like touch the previous one so I just like to use some scissors and cut them apart and I do this with chocolate I do it with ice melt or sugar um, I just cut my pieces apart and I think that it makes it a lot easier so I just pop my ice melt, like I said, 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid in the microwave. Um, I always bring my ice melt to a boil first to get out any air. So if it's already the color and flavor that I want, I'm not going to worry about um, making sure that I'm stirring it or anything like that like you would with chocolate. So uh, basically I'm just going to melt it down until it comes to a boil. When it comes to a boil, you take it out and you let it settle. So this one was sitting in the microwave for a minute before I took it out. So that's why you can see it is nice and liquid, but it's completely flat. It's not actively boiling and bubbling. That's when you want to use it because if you pour it when it's boiling and bubbling, it's going to one be too hot, um, so you don't want it to hurt your mold, but it also is going to um, tumble in the air bubbles and get those mixed into your finished piece. So if you let all the bubbles settle and pop themselves before you pour it, it's going to make it a lot easier. Said uh, Patricia said she's not a tea drinker, but she loves watching you in action. But aren't you going to be doing lots of other things? I am going to be doing lots of other things. I'm going to show this with tea, but I have some other tips and tricks up my sleeve for later um, of different ways that you can use this. So we're going to be making some um, cold tea bombs or cold drink bombs. Um, I'm going to talk about bath bombs, chocolate bombs, a whole bunch of different things. So it said Lisa um, would like to know about how much ice mold are you using per mold? Um, so per mold, uh, the will be probably about seven uh, grams, I would say, for each of these individual hearts. There's six of them on the sheet, um, but I found that together it weighs about 15 grams per tea bomb, so with two of those. Uh, so depending on how many you're making, um, you won't need very much at all. Uh, I don't know actually how many grams are in an ounce, but I know that there's a lot, oh, so yeah. <laughs> um, you're not going to use very much ice melt at I all. I think it's a couple ounces. Um, and Sandra would like to know if you'll save this video. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of my um, live streams are uploaded to my YouTube channel so you can go back and watch all of my past ones and it'll be available to watch on my Facebook page as well but it's a little easier to find on my YouTube channel. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do now that the ice mold's nice and settled is I'm going to fill up one part of my mold all the way. So I'm going to fill it to the tippy top. It's about two ounces. So two ounces in what? To 50 grams. 50 grams is two ounces. Okay, perfect. So you can get a lot. You do have to factor in um, some that's going to stick to the bowl and uh, things like that, but you definitely can get a lot of these. These are very light. Very, very light. That's why they dissolve so easy. Okay, so you can see I just filled up my mold all the way to the top, and even, th even though I am going to make a shell, but now I'm going to drain it out. So I'm going to carefully flip and drain all the excess back into the bowl. So remember, we are being careful with this. I do recommend wearing gloves, so I recommend a cotton glove with a nitrile or latex glove over top of that. That will buffer the heat from your hands because it is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius when you're working with it, so you do not want to touch it. Um, remember, I've been doing this for over 10 years, 13 years maybe now, and my hands do not feel heat anymore, so it's easier for me to demonstrate without the gloves, but I do recommend wearing the gloves. I know that some people are intimidated by ice milk because it's so hot, but if you bake and cook, you use ovens and stovetops every day, um, so you won't have any problem. Just remember to wear your gloves, be careful, pay attention to what you're doing. Okay, so I just kind of scraped some of the excess out, uh, off of the edge, but I didn't really get all of it, and that's okay because that's very easy to clean up in just a minute. Um, I'm going to use a silicone tool or a toothpick, but I'll go ahead and fill my other sections here first. Okay, so I'm going to fill up the next one. And then go ahead and let that drain. And I don't have to wait before I drain it back out because the mold is significantly cooler than the uh, ice mold. So as soon as it touches the mold, it's going to automatically just start to harden and thicken. But I do want to make sure that I drain out as much as possible because if you flip it over before it's done draining, any excess that needed to be drained out will just pool at the bottom and you could have thick spots. It'll all eventually melt in the water anyway, but you want to make sure that they melt as evenly as possible just for aesthetics. And this is the exact same technique that you would use for boiled sugar? This is the exact same technique, yeah. I would uh, make my boiled sugar, I would put it in a bowl, and I would fill and drain as needed. Can you color the sugar the same way? Yeah, you absolutely can. You just have to keep in mind um, about that it may not color the same if it has a yellow undertone from the um, sugar, because sugar is a little bit harder to get transparent. 
Okay. So I'm just going to do a couple more. You may have to reheat the ice malt in between these if they get a little too thick, or if you notice some bubbles getting tumbled in from just kind of putting it back and forth, some air can get mixed in sometimes. They so, look so pretty. You definitely can. Yeah, they already look cool, don't they? And you can do this with any mold. I mean, any mold that goes together, or I'm going to show you a two-part mold in a minute as well that's already put together before you pour it. And you could do this. Of course, this geometric heart has been very popular lately, um, and this is what came in the accessory kit for this um, live stream. So I wanted to use that, but I'm going to show you with circles and things like that later and some of the flatter hearts too. And you could absolutely make the tea bombs out of those if you wanted. But it's almost Valentine's Day, so it's definitely good to kind of go with the theme. Okay, and then I have one more. Right. The thicker the ice melt is, the thicker the um, layer and the wall is going to be. So if you find that your pieces are getting way too thick and they're not as thin and delicate as you want, try pouring it a little hotter or reheating it between pouring each one of these hearts. Um, but if you find that they're way too thin and they keep breaking when you try and take them out, it could be that they're too hot. So maybe just let the ice melt hang out for a couple extra minutes at room temperature to cool off um, until you pour it. Sandra would like to know what uh, to color the ice melt, what should she use? To color the ice melt, you can mix in a edible airbrush color, which would be a water or alcohol base, or you can mix in a powdered color, but the powdered colors are going to be more of an opaque effect, and the uh, liquid colors are going to be more transparent. You just don't want to use gel colors, because gel color will break down the ice melt and not allow it to dry properly, so it wouldn't hold its shape. Karen was wondering, can you set a fondant figure in ice melt? You absolutely can, yeah, as long as the, the fondant is dried. Um, you may have to do a kind of a slight test with your fondant because, of course, every fondant is going to be different depending on the ingredients in it. But as long as the fondant is dry, generally you can pour ice and malt right over it or you can encase it in something like this that's already cool. Okay, so now what I'm going to do before it sets up too much is I am just going to clear away some of the excess. We're going to be clearing away a lot of the excess later with the griddle, but I do want to just clear a tiny bit of it away, and I may have even waited a little bit too long, but I can actually use my fingers, with gloves, of course. Okay, so I just peel away some of this excess ice malt. If you, It kind of takes a couple times of doing it, but you can get it to that point where it just peels right away very easily. It's not too thick, but it's not too hot either. Generally, like I said, I'll use a toothpick or a silicone tool for this, but because I am talking and not paying as much attention as I usually would, it just got a little too cool, so I can just peel it away. So I'm kind of pulling against the edge, almost using it like a score mark in order for it to pull away. This one was so cool, it just broke right off when I pushed it down. It is like a score mark. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and let those cool. They're not going to take very long to cool because they are so thin, so it'll take probably about... Um, maybe five ten minutes it depends on your room temperature um what it's going if it's going to take longer or shorter if it is warmer or cooler in your room but i'm just going to put these off to the side for probably about 10 minutes or so just to be safe okay all right uh, sandra had another question yes. oh this one's a good one uh the equipment like bowls and tools we use when doing ice melt what do we use to clean them to get the ice melt off that is a very good question so it kind of goes along with this technique um ice melt is water soluble which means it completely dissolves in water so if you get anything on some uh, any ice melt on something that's not silicone um, or not non-stick and the ice melt does not want to come off of it all you have to do is soak it in some water or put a really wet paper towel over it or pour just some wa sitting water uh, right on top of it and it will dissolve so the ice melt, um, when we put this, let's say when we're making the tea bombs, when we put it in a cup of water, will completely dissolve, and um, it will do so in probably about five minutes for something this thickness. Of course, if you have like a really big spill, it may take a little bit longer for the ice melt to dissolve away, but it absolutely will dissolve from water, which is very nice. Yes, Easy cleanup. Clean if you get any on your clothes or your chef jacket, your apron, it'll all just dissolve away in the wash, um, and it's not doesn't have any sugar in it, so it's not going to be sticky after it's all gone. It also doesn't attract um, ants and bugs, which is nice because it doesn't have the sugar in it. And we live in Florida. Yeah, we live in Florida where it definitely is uh, more apt to find them. All right. 
Um, so I'm just heating up um, some clear this time because we're going to do our shakers in just a second. It kind of goes along with the same thing. Um, you can either do these as shaker lollipops or you could even do them as a shaker tea bomb and you could stir it into a drink if you wanted to um, using the lollipop stick as your spoon which will make more sense once I show you in a minute. Um, but for this one, we are going to use the flat hearts. So these are not geometric. They are completely flat. Okay, so as you can see, they have a nice flat base. And that gives us even more um, different things that we can do with this that I wanted to show you guys. So um, we're going to do two of them the same way that we just did. And then we're going to do two of them a little bit different, creating a backing. Because these are so thick, you could put them together. But I mean, that's kind of a really thick lollipop. Um, that's probably like an inch and a half or two inches of lollipop, and that's a little bit big for what we're doing. So we're actually gonna create a flat back and then a domed top, but if you wanted it bigger to put something larger inside of it, you absolutely could do uh, two the exact same way, but I wanted to switch it up a little bit and I'll show you guys this way of doing it. So when you're cleaning it up, does it matter if the water is hot or cold? It does not because uh, the water is really what's dissolving it, not the temperature. So it is uh, can be cold or hot. I usually do hot just for good measure because it can help, but um, it's not really going to do too much of a difference. Yeah, because it's not like it's boiling. Right, it's not like it's boiling water because ice melt doesn't melt till probably about 200, at least 200 degrees. It doesn't start to melt, so unless the water is that hot, um, it's probably not going to do much. All right. So all I did was I melted some clear ice melt this time. Since this is going to be a shaker and we are going to put a design inside of it, um, I'm going to use the clear this time so that we can see that a little bit better. So um, I'm actually going to do the base pieces first because this is a little bit too thin to pour the shells right now. I think that they would be too thin and delicate. So I'm going to pour the flat base pieces first with the design and then we'll pour our, our shells after that. Um, so to do that, we're going to use an icing sheet. So this is uh, the design that came with this accessory kit, but of course you could use any kind of icing sheet that you want. These are icing sheets they are not transfer sheets so they're not the ice melt transfer sheets they're just thick um, opaque uh, icing sheets you could do this with a transfer sheet if you want but I wanted it to be a little bit more stark and a little bit more contrasting to the clear and stand out a little bit better than the transfer sheets which are clear so what we're gonna do um, is I just printed this on my icing images icing paper I have some that are already pre-cut out here of each of the colors and we're just gonna lay this down in the mold first I'm gonna look at it so I make sure it's centered I did peel the backing off since these are such thick, durable sheets, they're gonna hold up really well. And then I'm just gonna press it down, make sure it's all stuck. Okay. You could lay this on the back of the ice melt if you prefer, or you can put it down first. It is really up to you. It doesn't make too much of a difference in the end. I just like to, if I can have them already set and ready to go and centered and take my time with it, I like to put them in first. Okay, since ice melt's clear, you'll be able to see it through the layer of ice melt we're gonna put on top of it right now. So I just put those in there. I'm just going to pour enough to cover the bottom. Okay, and that will create a nice base for us. And to keep it from getting too thick and heavy, I might just tilt the mold slightly and get that all filled in. There we go. I know it doesn't look like too much of a difference between the one I filled and didn't fill right now because it's so clear, but it will look very cool once it comes out. There we go. So again, I didn't fill it all the way. I'm just tilting it into all the crevices. And you just want to make sure that it's all filled out so that when we put the one on top of it, it um, ends up really nice. Now, if you have any stray bubbles that may have tumbled in, what you can do uh, after you pour is just very, very lightly torch over the surface and it will pop any of those bubbles. There we go. I kind of like the bubbly look for this because I feel like it adds a lot of whimsy and a lot of fun to the piece. So um, I'm going to not worry too much about them. Sometimes with the icing sheets, because there's air in the icing, it does give off some bubbles. But I kind of like it. I think that it adds like a really fun sort of look to it. So I'm going to leave it uh, as is and not worry too much about it. And I'll let these cool off to the side. Okay, and then with the other two that we have on here, I'm going to make the shells just like we did before. So I'm going to start with one and fill it all the way up to the top. Okay, and then immediately and carefully drain that out. So I'm just pouring all the excess back in the bowl. And again, you just want to make sure that all that excess comes out so that 
it doesn't uh, pool in the bottom. Although with these, it's not the biggest deal if some of it pools at the bottom because it's totally flat. So you're not going to see it quite as much. Plus, we are going to torch these a little bit afterwards to get it nice and clear. And if it's a little bit thicker at the base, sometimes it works better. So sometimes, if I really want to make sure that these are nice and flat, I'll even pour a little bit more clear in it after I drain it, just so that it settles and thickens that bottom. Alright, so the second one filling up. And draining out. And then we'll let those cool as well. They're probably going to take about 10 minutes at room temperature as well. Uh, I never put my ice melt in the fridge or the freezer because the moisture and condensation will affect it. So I want to make sure that I'm not making it sticky or anything from the moisture. There we go. And I can do that same thing where I clean up the edges in just a second here too. While I'm just waiting for that to set up for a minute, I'm going to pop my pink back in for the next step that I'm going to show you guys or the next technique. They almost look like strawberries sitting off to the side. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm sure everybody is overseeing strawberries this weekend already, right? <laughs> Sid, um, Sandra would like to know, when choosing the kind of silicone molds to buy for ice mold, do we need to check what temperature they can take? Yes, absolutely, because most silicones are going to be okay. They're going to be high heat, but not all silicones are. So definitely make sure that they go up to at least 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, usually if they're dishwasher safe, they're going to go up to a pretty high temperature, but you just want to make sure um, that they are going to go up to that temperature. If you're ever not sure, what I'll do is I'll take my mold, and instead of filling it in with ice malt in case it were to stick to it or melt it, is I pour a little bit on the side or on the top, let it cool, and when it's completely cool, if it releases, I generally think it's okay um, to use. If it doesn't release, then you can dissolve it away with water or soak it in water, like I said, and you didn't actually harm the inside of your mold, even if it did melt a little spot on the outside. So that's usually how I test it if I can't get in touch with the company um, to see how the uh, what temperature my mold goes to. Okay, so you can see I'm just peeling away this excess. Still a little bit on the warm side. This one's probably better. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get the bulk of it off, and then we'll clean it up completely with the griddle. Just makes the griddling step a little bit faster. All right. Sure. Great questions, guys. Thanks. Yeah, very, very good questions. Keep them coming. All right. So I just make it my Alright, so that was um, making our tea bombs or starting our tea bombs with uh, pieces that are going to go together, right? Two halves that are going to go together. But there's also the kind of molds, um, like I was just holding up, that are going to go together um, first. So this is our heart mold, and so you can see it's about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller, no, probably about the same size as the other ones. It's a smooth heart, so it's more of a perfectly smooth, um, bubbly heart. And uh, that is going to be, you could fill them the same way that I did before, but it has this spout that goes together. I'm going to double wrap two of my rubber bands at the top and bottom, and then you can actually make it in one piece. So I'm going to just make sure that it's all lined up. Just like that. Okay. So Shirley was wondering, um, she has a lot of tools. How can she tell if they're silicone? Um, because some plastics. Some plastics do feel like silicone. Uh, I would say with those, because there isn't that much that you can, you can't really like dip them in without risking accidentally melting them, is I, I would check with the company. That's going to be the easiest way to see if they are silicone or not, um, is to check with the company or look on the packaging to make sure, because you don't want to accidentally test it by dipping it into the ice melt or using it with ice melt and it not be silicone. Yeah, because like a lot of pl plastic cups and things that will melt. Exactly, yeah, plastic cups, um, plastic tools. Uh, the sugar shapers are okay. I know for, for sure those are. I have a bunch of sugar shapers that I use. Our silicone tool set that we have on our website um, is actually a silicone compound, so it's not pure silicone. It's like a silicone um, compound, like I said. So it can go in the ice melt when it's been cooled off, but you can't put it in boiling hot ice melt or else it will melt. So um, it just kind of depends on the tool and what it's made out of. Unfortunately, sometimes it just takes trial and error. <laughs> Okay, so I put the two halves together, and I'm now I'm going to use my pink. So I wanted to show you how I would do it with these, because you absolutely can turn these into um, some different effects with the T-bombs. 
Okay, so I'm just filling this all the way up to the top. I'm just going nice and slow so I don't overfill it by accident. It's like one of those relaxing videos. Exactly. Mesmerizing. It's an ASMR video. Okay, and then I'll immediately drain it out just like I did before. It'll take a little bit more time to get all that ice melt out. And then you can do this one layer if you want, but I prefer with two part molds like this to do two layers of ice melt um, instead of just one because you have to handle them a lot more and it's a little bit harder to get them out of the mold. So you want them to be as strong as possible. But I found even with the two layers, um, it doesn't take more than, I mean, it probably took the same amount of time to dissolve in the water if maybe a minute more, but nothing significant. But the strength was significantly um, affected. Okay, so I'm just letting it all drain out. And then once it's drained, it will be hollow in that little hole there. And all you'll have to do is let that cool. You fill it in with whatever you want. Um, you can take it out first and then fill it in if you want, or you can fill it in in the mold. And then I would just put like a little base on it so that it sits up and it covers the hole. So I would just pour like a little medallion or a little mold, uh, a flat mold that I wanted to. You could even pour one of these flat hearts and put it on it. And um, that would give you more options as far as closing it over. You could put fillings inside of it. You can put whatever you want inside of it. Um, I do have one that I already poured. It's not a heart. But um, it is actually our lemon mold because I wanted to show you guys something super cool um, that I was working on. So my friend, Holly Broussard, who I went on the Freak Show Cakes on Food Network uh, show with when we did that competition, uh, she was asking me, she gave me a challenge. Um, she said, would the hot tea bombs work in something that is not hot? Would it work in cold water? Um, so I was like, that's an interesting question. Let me find that out. So we did some testing and it actually does work because like I said before, it's really the water that's dissolving it, it's not the temperature because unless the temperature is above like 200, 300 degrees, it's not going to affect it. So um, it is completely fine to make something that needs to dissolve in cold water. And I thought how interesting that was because um, it's winter right now um, in most places, um, so it is going to be all about hot drinks, right? Hot tea, um, hot cocoa bombs, all of that. But what happens when summer comes and, you know, people aren't drinking those as much, um, you can definitely make cold bombs so you could make um, cold tea you can make iced tea bombs or you could do something like this with the lemon and make lemonade bombs because think about it you can put the uh, lemonade mix the powdered lemonade mix right inside of the little lemon and then you can close it off on the bottom and you have yourself a lemonade bomb um, I didn't pour out all the excess because I was rushing to do this right before we started to show you guys so that's why it has a little line but honestly it doesn't look too bad um, but imagine that there's so many different cold drinks that you can get powdered and mixed in, right? You could do tea, you can do lemonade, um, there's just so many more options to keep this trend going um, through the summer months, which I think is really, really fun. All right, so that's our lemon. We also have an apple mold, we have a pear, so you can coordinate whatever mold you use to whatever kind of drink you're going to do. Um, and the nice part, again, about the ice malt is that it won't add to the sweetness, so it won't make it overly sweet lemonade because the powder is already sweetened itself, so you don't want it to be like shockingly sweet or anything like that or you can flavor the ice malt with lemon you could do that with sugar too with like a lemon flavoring um, you could put like a sour flavoring in it and make them like pucker lemon flavors <laughs> Sandra said it looks like an egg with the lime <laughs> it does right it has a texture on it um, if you look at it really close it has that like realistic lemon texture on it but definitely that would be cute to do little egg bombs as well Oh, that would be adorable. You have the egg, right? Yeah, yeah, we have the egg mold, the two-part egg mold. It's uh, about that same size, maybe a tiny bit smaller, and that would fit perfect inside of a mug, and you could do Easter. All right, so that is um, our different uh, pieces poured. So I also wanted to talk, though, a little bit about doing this with chocolate because I do it with chocolate a little bit different. I'm going to put my chocolate in the microwave. Um, for this, I'm going to show you one. Um, I'm just going to show how I pour one because I think that everybody's probably at this point seen hot cocoa bombs, but I just wanted to talk about my personal method for these, um, for doing them. So it was not clipped, but it's just loosely, it's loosely tied. <laughs> Um, so I'm just heating up some melting chocolate. So this is Merkin's um, confectionery coating. It's not chocolate that needs to be tempered, but you absolutely could temper it if you wanted to and use it. Um, just for time's sake, I'm not going to do that today. Um, but this is going to just melt for about 15 second intervals. I put it right in the piping bag so that there's no mess and um, nothing to clean, which I like. 
Lisa said if you use the apple, you could use a spiced cider. Ooh, that would be so good. See? I knew you guys would have tons of different ideas. I would like mulled wine. Oh, a mulled wine one? You could put, like, the spices in it and then yeah. dissolve it in some hot wine. Mm, I might have to try that. It's already like 80 degrees here in Florida, so it's kind of uh, over the warm season, but who knows, you might get a cold spike and make some more different hot beverages. Um, Sandra would like to know on the yellow mold you used with the rubber bands, yeah. um, did you pour the ice malt only one time or two? I did it only one time, um, just for time's sake. I would definitely do it again uh, if I was going to be actually making these, but um, you can do either depending on what you like. I just find that it's a lot stronger if you do two. I did do it once today just because I wasn't going to be taking that one out uh, to show you guys since I already had the lemon pre-done, but I do recommend two. So see how I'm just smushing it in between those 15 second intervals to get it nice and melted. I'm also preheating my electric griddle over here because we're going to put some stuff together. So I'm going to do it between like 200 and 250 degrees for the ice malt. Of course with chocolate it would be much lower, you would just put it in at the lowest setting on your griddle. So just melting and kneading this until all the chunks are gone. And I'm just kind of working through all these lumps. Oh, right here. All right. That should be good. What I do to help hold these, you could put it in a little cup or a dish or something if you want, but um, I have these that I haven't used yet, so I'm going to make a little stand for them. So I'm just going to put four of these upside down, put one in the middle, and it holds it straight up. Okay, And then I'm just going to clip the top, and I don't fill and drain these. If I was going to do uh, tempered chocolate, it's a lot more fluid, so I would use uh, the filling and draining method with something like that. But these molds are also a little bit more flexible, which is nice because they release easier, um, and you don't have to be quite as uh, careful with them when you take them out. But um, sometimes, you know, you could dense them or something like that. So I actually like to paint it up the sides instead, personally. So I'm just going to cut the tip off my chocolate bag here. I'm going to fill this about a third to a half way up, a little chunk there, I rushed it, <laughs> paper towel to set this up, alright so what I do first is I'm just going to take it over here and tap it to make sure that it's all filled in, and then I'm just going to take a nice flat brush and I'm going to paint it up the sides, I did a little bit more than I normally would because I had a little chunk that I didn't realize was still there. But you could scoop some out if you did that. The most important part with these, as you guys probably know, is making sure the top edge is nice and thick. So I do like to make sure that I paint it up the sides a couple times. So I'm going around in a circle a few times and really, really kind of caking it on up there. Sometimes I'll even let it cool for a minute or two at room temperature to thicken itself and then I do it again or I just scoop some on my paintbrush and just paint it on the edges. And there we go. So even putting a little bit more chocolate than I normally do, it still has a nice cavity, especially when there's two to fill it with your little marshmallows and your um, hot cocoa mix. And then I would just put that in the freezer. You can clean up the top edge a little bit if you want to, but I would just put that in the freezer, let it cool, and because these are so flexible, they come out really easy, and you can put it together the same way I'm about to show you with the um, tea bombs. Okay. So that's my method of doing it. It's pretty quick doesn't require too many tools, which I like. Lisa said that she found the mini cupcake pan works really good to hold the round molds. Oh, that's a very good tip. I like that. Okay. All right, so we got all of our different pieces made. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmold some of our uh, hearts. So I'm just lightly kind of pulling it apart at the edges because the suction is oftentimes what's actually holding the piece in. And then I'm just going to... Carefully pull that 
out. Now, you may notice with silicone molds that you do sometimes, that looks so pretty on camera, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by how shiny that was. Um, but sometimes you will get some tiny little bubbles on the surface. That's normal, you didn't do anything wrong. Um, that happens with silicone because it breathes. Just like skin, it has pores. Um, so I don't really worry about those. If you were to spray it with the clear edible glaze spray, like I do all of my ice melt pieces at the end, it will take that away. But honestly, as soon as you drop it into the water, they all start to dissolve and melt away and it looks perfect. You really can't tell. And because these are not just a perfectly flat, smooth piece anyway, it's not that big of a deal because you're not trying to see something through it. It kind of adds to the mystery like a frosted glass. Okay, so I'm just going to take these out. They look so, so pretty. Um, now you can see how nice and shiny these are. That is because they're ice molts, but you'll get that with chocolate too. Um, but one question that I get a lot is washing your molds, your silicone molds, um, and you don't ever want to use soap directly on the surface of your molds. Whether that be silicone or plastic or polycarbonate chocolate molds, you don't want to use soap applied directly onto it. Um, so what I do is I just use hot water. If I want to sterilize it, um, you can use hot soapy water washed over it, but don't actually scrub the soap into the surface because that's a really easy way to mar up the surface of your molds and make them not shiny anymore. With plastic molds, you can polish them with um, cotton swabs or cotton balls before you pour them with chocolate and things, but with silicone that would just stick. So um, it's really important not to scrub any, cho uh, any soap onto the surfaces. Okay. Look how cool those are. I absolutely Beautiful. love that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll let those cool. And we'll, well, no, we can put those together too now since we have, we'll have the griddle out. So I'm going to take out my um, flat hearts as well. So the same thing, just being careful. Some of the excess is breaking off the edge there, but that's totally fine. So you can see. You can see the bubbles a little bit more on this one, but we are actually, since we want to see through it, we're going to torch those away in a minute. Okay, so I'm just... It looks like a candy dish. Hopefully, yeah, right? You could put, definitely turn this into anything that you wanted to. Okay. There we go. So I just have like a little ice melt cup. <laughs> Molds pop right back into shape, so you can use those again. Alright, and then we're going to unmold our little flat hearts as well. So these are cute as lollipops by themselves. You could dip and stick a lollipop stick onto the back and call it a day. But we're going to turn these into our shakers. Now it'll probably be a little bit easier to see on these, so I'm going to hold it up. Um, when I flip it over, there's a little bit of like a matteness on the back. Um, from the bubbles. So what we're going to do is we're going to torch those away. Because the paper is submerged in the ice mold, it shouldn't um, char or anything like that, but I'm still going to turn the torch low and just kind of go up to the edge. I'm going to do half so you, you can see the difference when I hold it up. Okay, let that cool obviously before you pick it up. I'll do this one too. Okay. Um, let's see if I can show you guys the difference. So. And usually when I can get the light reflection, you can see it. This side is the side that I torched. This side is the side that I didn't. So there's a little bit less definition when you look through it. This one's a little bit brighter and shinier. Okay, so you can see the bubbles against my fingers compared to no bubbles. Okay, so that's just a nice step to clear everything up. And then I'll generally do that with bees as well. So um, because this is a nice flat surface, you can just torch those away. Um, I'm going to set them back onto the mold um, to let them cool flat. I don't like to set it onto the Silpat mat because it has a texture on it. So I'll either use my thin silicone mat that I use for pulling or I'll just use the mold itself. And all we're going to do is do this in very, very, very light layers. We're just going to torch. Even if it's not completely done, we're going to flip it over very quickly and set it on a flat surface because the ice melt's going to get um, warm and soft and you don't want it to collapse and push down or wave or anything like that because then the surface is going to look a little bit warped. So I let it cool like that and then I'll repeat that process as much as I need to. If I need to do that a couple more times, I will. I'm not going to do too much today just because, uh, for time's sake, because you could really spend a lot of time perfecting these and making them perfect. But I don't want to bore you guys doing the same thing over and over. 
and then we'll let all these guys cool and we'll start putting together our uh, tea bombs first so if you have any edges because we're only going to heat one of the sides when, and the tea is going to be in the other side um, if you have any edges that are a little bit rough to start with uh, you can go ahead and just press those down onto the griddle so I preheated the griddle to about 225 in the frame as much as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to, um, I don't put any grease down because I can just soak it in water afterwards and the ice melt will come up and I find that the grease keeps the two pieces from sticking together, but you could put a tiny bit of pan down if you were nervous. Okay, I'm just melting away some of the edges to start with. I'm going to turn it up just a tiny bit more. Okay, this flattens the whole thing out and cleans up some of the edges. You can do this with the chocolate too, like I said, but I would not do this um, at this temperature. It would be at the lowest temperature your griddle goes to, since chocolate melts at about 80 degrees. It'll be melted enough. Okay, so I just cleaned up some of those top edges and now we're going to put our tea in. So you have a couple different options for your tea. Again, there's lots of different things you can do depending on what you like. Um, so the most popular trend with these that I found is using the loose leaf tea. So I picked a really pretty tea that actually turns the water um, pink uh, because it's a strawberry hibiscus tea. So uh, I just got the loose leaf tea, or actually I just took this out of the tea bags, but you can get loose leaf tea at a lot of health food stores. You can get it online. Loose leaf tea um, has been around for a really long time. That's what they use when they, um, like if you hear about somebody reading tea leaves, um, you can't do that in a tea bag. You have to use loose leaf tea for that because um, basically what happens is when the water absorbs into the tea, it could take a couple minutes, but it happens. Um, it'll all absorb in and it'll sink to the bottom and you won't have any of the um, stuff uh, inside of the um, tea or at least on the surface of the tea it all just sinks to the bottom so it's fine to drink um, so that I'm going to use that for this one here and you could do as much as you want depending on how potent you want the tea to be but a lot of people don't like loose leaf tea because it is going to be um, an acquired kind of texture and taste some people don't want the um, little pieces of the sediment in your tea so you can also just use a tea bag so you can just kind of flip this or fold it up you can put it right into the center and then I've seen a lot of people just keep the string kind of coming out the top and it looks perfect because it's just like a little um, ornament like on a string so you could absolutely do that too if you wanted to and that way when the ice melt dissolves it all comes out um, another really cool thing that we found is uh, these tea I don't know what they're called tea flowers um, but they're little kind of foil wrapped balls of tea flowers or tea leaves and when they dissolve into or when they get absorbed into the water of the tea they open and they blossom almost and that fits right in the center of it too so you could do something like that and then it's actually sitting um, on you know on the top of the tea or down in the tea without the little pieces going everywhere as much as the loose leaf tea so lots of different options depending on your personal preference you could use anything that you want to um, that is the beauty of sugar art is that there's lots of options depending on what you like the best okay so all I did I'm just going to show you with this one is I just kind of filled maybe like halfway up this one side because it doesn't take as much. I try and eyeball about what would be in a tea bag, maybe a little more since these are bigger. And then I'm just going to really thoroughly heat one side of the heart, get it nice and sticky, and immediately press it down onto the other half. If it doesn't press down the first time, you may not have gotten it hot enough, so just do a little bit more. And then that's it. So you can see the tea inside. It may stick a little bit to the outside, but I think that that looks really cool. And all you have to do is just dunk that down into your um, cup of water. Easy as that. You can see how thin and delicate it is, even with the tea inside. I think the tea is the heaviest part of this. It's so lightweight and so nice. Um, I'm going to grab the lollipops and put those together as well. Okay, I would torch these a little bit more, but you can see the, how it started to get really, really nice and clear. Put the sprinkles or something fun in there. Yeah, you definitely can. I have some sprinkles here. You could put some tea into these as well. So I would just put a little pile of it in the middle. Let's see if I can get these flat. <laughs> I should have picked flat or um, flatter sprinkles. Let's see if I can put these round sprinkles in. I'll just do a few. And I'm just going to. Uh, you can put the stick in now if you want to, or you can attach it onto the back by dipping it in liquid ice melt and sticking it on. Let me do actually this one because this one's a little bit clearer. Okay. So I'm just 
just melting that. Sticking it on. There we go. So you can see they're all rattling around in there. So you can take your lollipop stick, you can dip it in some liquid ice melt and put it to the back. You could even do something more like a popsicle stick and give it a little more strength. If you filled that with tea, then you can actually take this like a tea wand and you can stir it into your drink and it would dissolve that way, which I think would be really, really fun and cool. Um, now, I generally would glaze the inside of these. If you're doing something like this that you actually do want to see through it, I would spray it before I put the two together. So I would spray the bottom and I'd spray the inside of the half with the clear edible glaze spray, let it dry, and that way your uh, beads don't get sticky and they don't stick uh, and not want to rattle anymore. It'll give you a lot more movement to them. But um, that gives you some really cool design ideas because you can layer the icing images like I did or the transfer sheets. You can leave them clear, you could paint on them if you wanted to. Um, just kind of like you... the Mario Brother game. Exactly, yeah. So what did you use? The... Um, what I did was I actually took, I have another live stream on it that I did. Um, I did Mario themed shakers and I took a toothpick um, I heated up the surface of my ice malt and waited just a minute. I took a toothpick, or this would probably work really good to a lollipop stick, and I put little indents in certain spots in the bottom piece, and then it was like the little game that you tilt around and try and catch the ball into the little indent. Um, so that is a really fun kind of interactive dessert that you can do, or interactive um, tea bomb that you could do. Uh, and I mean, there's really, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? There's so, so, so many different things um, that you can do. Now, uh, like I said, I do glaze these, so I would glaze these with the clear edible glaze spray, that will keep them so that even if they're out in, in just uh, in the air and not sealed, they will stay nice and shiny and they won't get sticky or cloudy for generally a couple weeks depending on your humidity. Um, but if you don't want to add the glaze onto it because it can keep it from uh, dissolving as quick since it, that's what it does, it keeps the water out, um, you don't have to necessarily but you have to seal these in an airtight container immediately as in like even before right now um, as soon as you stick them together put them in a bag seal it completely um, and it's done so that does uh, ju it's just because ice melt the longer that it's out will absorb more and more moisture and humidity so even if you seal it after it's been out for like 20 30 minutes uh, it won't matter because the moisture is already inside and it'll make it sticky and cloudy so they have to be uh, sealed immediately or glazed immediately and that will keep them from getting sticky or cloudy um, if they're with sugar like i said they have to uh, have a little bit less of a shelf life just because they do absorb the moisture even quicker than ice melt does um, but they're really good for making them um, you know as a fun project or you're going to bring them somewhere that day and uh, you can use them right away and they work fantastic okay so that is my hot tea bomb slash chocolate bomb slash shaker lollipop <laughs> demonstration um, if you guys have any other questions oh i do have one more thing actually that i was going to show you guys um, another thing that you can do is uh, instead of an edible version, uh, because these dissolve in water, you can actually turn these into bath bombs. So I found this bath bomb mix, I think at Walmart, but you can, I'm sure you can order it, or you can make your own too. And this is just powdered bath bomb mix. It has all of the right stuff in it to make it fizzy. It has the bath salts and everything and the scent already in it. You can fill that in. Remember, this is not edible. This is not an edible um, thing that we would be making with this. But because the ice malt is not real sugar, it doesn't get sticky. So if you dissolve this in your bath, it won't make you sticky um, and it won't get sugar everywhere because it's sugar free so it dissolves the same way it would in tea but it doesn't actually um, you know make you sticky or anything like that uh, I'm gonna just put a cup of water because I wanted to demonstrate to dissolve my tea bomb I'm gonna put that in the microwave but um, you can make your own with different essential oils you can do whatever you want um, and it kind of puffs and pops out of the um, the ice malt shell really beautifully it fizzes up and it's just kind of a cool different look to a bath bomb because generally they're more opaque um, or they have you know the texture of this uh, this is kind of a cool like encased in glass sort of look oh, I froze. Are you frozen? Oh, um, I'm not sure am I frozen I think I'm going still on my iPad it might just be me <laughs> Um, Sandra also said seal it in a plastic container in a room in room temperature, not the refrigerator, correct? Correct. Yeah, you want to keep it at room temperature, um, not in the refrigerator because the moisture and the condensation will make it sticky. Okay, yeah, any other questions you guys have, I am here to answer. Make sure if you guys make your own uh, hot tea bombs that you tag me because I would absolutely love to see if you got the accessory kit for this project um, that has uh, the different molds that I used, uh, the smaller ones, it has the ice malt, it has, um, you know, kind of everything to get you started. I'm going to take my cup here with my hot water. I just microwave some water. 
take my tea balm and I'm going to dip it in. And then just kind of it immediately will get really nice and shiny. Because there's a seam on it, that's kind of the weakest point, and that's where the tea is going to start coming out. And so I find with the water, um, with dissolving it, it's going to take about less than five minutes for it to completely dissolve, um, but it'll all be loose and kind of breaking apart, as you can see it already is, um, in just a minute or so. So you can see that it's kind of starting to warp. And uh, when I did the cold water, it was about the same. I think it maybe took a minute extra, but it really wasn't that big of a difference, which I thought was very cool. So doing the lemonades and iced teas and things like that would be very, very cool. Of course, you could also put ice cubes in this after it dissolves too, to help because the, the tea likes the hot water to steep it and to get the flavor really nice and intense. The color of the ice malt will flavor the water slightly, but this tea also um, has a pinkish tinge to it because I picked that strawberry hibiscus. And there you go. So it looks um, like all of the tea is at the top right now, but like I said, with loose leaf tea, what happens is the water kind of absorbs into each of the leaves after a couple minutes and it all will sink to the bottom and you won't have to worry. You can also get reusable um, tea strainers that you could use and put one of those inside, like a really tiny one. Um, and then, you know, that's kind of like a little gift inside of it. You can put anything really inside of it like uh, that you wanted to kind of dissolve and have something out of it, like those bath toys and things, or like in the middle of bath bombs, how they put little toys, as long as it's, um, you know, something that will fit inside. But yeah, so, so many different ways that you can do this. I look forward to seeing you guys' different interpretations, because I know that you'll come up with some really cool stuff as well. And of course, this is just Valentine's. Um, we've seen with all the cocoa bombs, all the different molds and, or, uh, you know, designs that people have come up with. It's been really, really cool to see. Um, I'll let this sit off to the side, and I'll have some tea in a couple minutes. <laughs> Alright, so what do you guys think? Can you see using this with either the ice malt or the sugar or um, chocolate or bath bombs or anything like that? Awesome, awesome. Yay, I'm so excited. Oh, lemon tea, that would be super, super good. Awesome, yeah, and with all the different, like I said, the molds of doing like the lemon versus the hearts and um, just spheres themselves look really cool because they're like these little glass orbs that just dissolve right into your tea. I think it's such a cool trend and I'm very excited about it. So make sure that you tag me if you recreate this trend. Uh, make sure that you tag me because I would absolutely love to see uh, everything that you guys make. Um, Sid, so would you put it in the airtight container after spraying it or before? Um, so if you spray it with the glaze, you don't have to put it in an airtight container because it creates its own airtight container, but it does give it even even longer life because eventually, because the glaze is edible, it will deteriorate. Um, in Florida, with our community, it usually lasts after a couple weeks. Um, it will start to get a little cloudy. You can just spray it again if you want, but if you do keep it in an airtight container after you glaze it and it's dry, um, it will uh, kind of create that longevity even longer. So um, if you don't glaze it, you can put it directly in the airtight container and you don't have to worry about it as long as you sealed it right away. Awesome, awesome. So I wanted to remind you guys um, before I go about a couple of my upcoming live streams and events. I'm going to pop those up onto the screen. Um, so I'm going to show you guys what my next play date is going to be now for March. Um, so if you enjoyed this and you want to see another free ice malt play date, um, my next one is going to be March 5th at 2 p.m. EST right here on my Facebook page. We're going with an Easter theme because Easter is coming up quick. So uh, we have this beautiful ice malt panoramic egg. So I did this uh, peacock design in the middle of it. I did kind of an elegant version. We're going to be doing casts and pulled ice malt because we're going to be making the little feet uh, and everything to go on it. You could absolutely, because we have this accessory kit online, but you could also use whatever um, center medallion you want. If you have a really cool mold that you want to use as the center um, kind of focal point, you could use that instead of the peacock. There's lots of different options, but that will be totally free uh, right here on my Facebook page, just like this one, uh, but we do have that accessory kit on my website if you're interested in uh, following along with exactly what I use. Um, and then my next ice malt zoom classes are going to be um, the edible oyster. So if you want more of a face-to-face -face over Zoom class. We have so much fun with these classes every month. Um, we're doing the edible ice malt oysters and hot sauce bottles, so that's all ice malt, the oysters, ice, the hot sauce, everything is all ice malt. That will be February 26th and 27th, um, either day. There's one class each day, um, so that is available on my website now. And I also have a chocolate class that's upcoming too, um, so if you want to learn more about chocolate tempering with the tabling um, on the marble slab method and tempering cocoa butter to get those bright designs, uh, I have that one is on March 12th and 13th, so um, we have all of that listed. All of the information and everything is on my website. If you're interested, that one's a Zoom workshop as well. Um, and then another reminder, 
after this to go and tune in to these Yotu pen page because Myra is going to be doing her amazing live stream on creating that uh, heart that I have up on the screen there using Simi Ice Malt and the Zioto pen and she just has so many cool things to show you guys I'm super excited to watch so go to the Zioto pen page or I will be sharing it on my page um, and you can check that out uh, it's going to be at 4 p.m. EST so in about one hour and uh, Marsha was wondering do you have any kids left? Uh, yes, we do have the kits for this um, uh, technique left, so if you saw it and you want to try it, we have them listed on my website, seemycakes.com. It's down. I think it's kind of dark. You can't really see it there. <laughs> you can kind of see it, um, but if you just click on my profile, you can get to my website. We have that. I have all of my past uh, Playdate kits are all on there and my Zooms as well because I do them pre-recorded afterwards, so you can check out any of those techniques and all of my live streams, including this one, will be up on my YouTube channel um, in the next few days. I have all of my past ones, so you can go back and follow along at any time and at your own pace or it'll be available um, here on my Facebook page too. So this is cool. Lisa said she found on Amazon tea straws and you can sip your tea through the straw and has a little strainer at the bottom. <gasps> that's so cool. That's a that's a really good idea because some people don't like yeah that um, loose leafness. That's a really awesome. So you could even use that as like the um, stick like I did and then you can have them kind of mix it in with that and then they have a straw built in or you can put it with it. That's a really cool idea. That is so cool. Very cool. Good tip. <laughs> Awesome. Do you guys have any cool. other questions? You're welcome to send me messages at any time too on here on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, you're always welcome to send team. me questions. Yeah, and join the Simi Torch team if you're not a part of it. It is a totally free Facebook group um, where we have so much fun getting inspiration from each other, posting pictures, asking questions. And I also put all um, of my like new tutorials and my kits and molds and things up there first for first access. And we have giveaways and we have competitions and a whole bunch of different fun stuff. Yes, this um, month. This month we are having, what is it, February? Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah, Valentine's Day is our theme, so if you uh, post a picture with the right hashtags and everything that you'll see in the group um, and of your Valentine's themed ice melt pieces, see me ice melt pieces, you can be entered to win a giveaway at the end of the month. We do that every month, um, as well as doing free gifts and special discount codes for our members. So it's totally free. Just search see me torch team um, and it should come up, or you can send me a message and I will invite you I'm to the group. Okay, awesome. I'll post a link uh, to the group or the name of the group. I don't know if it'll come um, out like... Um, a highlight but you'll get the spelling okay maybe. good yeah just copy and paste that into the search and it should pop up um, or again if you can't find it just send me a message and I would be happy to add you we have so much fun there it's so awesome to see everybody's different pieces and um, interpretations and the um, just awesome work that everybody does <laughs> okay awesome any last minute questions all good Lisa says this is how she's founding her snow filled weekend <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny. Definitely, yeah, um, if you recreate these, put, uh, tag me in pictures because I would love to see what you're creating in your snow-filled weekend. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, thank you guys so much. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you tuning in today, and I will see you in my next live stream. Thanks for coming, guys. Happy Bye. Valentine's yeah, happy Myra. Valentine's Day. Yeah, tune in one hour for Myra on the Zio2 pen page, and I'll share it here. Bye, everybody. Bye.